The 22nd Tenkaichi Budokai takes place after the events of the Fortune Teller Baba arc. As the Dragon Team head toward their destination, a PA announcement on the plane informs passengers of their imminent landing at the Tenkaichi Budokai. Poir expresses confidence in Yamcha winning the tournament this time, prompting Krillin to cut in and assert he'll be winning for sure. Bulma brings up Goku, and Oolong mentions Jackie Chun as a formidable opponent as well. Next to them, Launch, in her aggressive form, tries to contain her urge to hijack the plane, and Master Roshi grabs the attention of a stewardess, expressing he needs to take a dump. Later, outside of the airport, the group wait for Master Roshi, who eventually emerges from the bathroom, yelling aloud how constipated he was. With little to no time to make registration, they take cabs to the Budokai Arena, and upon arriving, Roshi instructs Krillin and Yamcha to sign in. The absence of Goku is noted, and though Roshi questions if the boy forgot about the tournament, Oma assures him that it'll show, as he was looking forward to this day. At the same time, Master Roshi discreetly makes his way to the registration counter and reveals his identity as Jackie Chun. Meanwhile, three strangers with matching outfits affiliated with the Crane logo appear. The old man, now known as Master Shen, insults Roshi and states he heard his disciples were catching a lot of attention at the last Tenkaichi Budokai. Behind Shen are his disciples, and he plans to win this tournament for the Crane School and urges Roshi to quit while he can. Roshi, however, mocks Shen, and after a brief exchange of insults between the two, Shen and his disciples depart. Yamcha questions who the old man was, prompting Roshi to explain that Shen is his former rival. At the same time, Oolong points out that there's only one minute left to register, and Yamcha suggests Par impersonate Goku for registration. Launch interrupts though, announcing Goku's arrival, and the boy arrives in an animal skin outfit with a power pole strapped to his back. Everyone greets Goku enthusiastically as Roshi signs him in, and when questioned on the location of the flying Nimbus, Goku confirms he didn't use it, having swam from a place called Yahoi on the opposite side of the earth for training. The PA system calls contestants for the preliminaries, and Yamcha, Krillin, and Goku change into their turtle-style gi. Well wishes follow as the trio head in, and inside, contestants recognize Goku and the others from the previous Tenkaichi Budokai. Outside, Puar and the others wonder where Master Roshi went, and we soon see Jackie Chun in the preliminary area, the contestants recognizing him as well. Goku flags the old man down and confidently declares his intention to win, but unbeknownst to Goku, Jackie Jackie, aka Roshi, is equally determined to win, having trained in secret for this day. The tournament official announces 182 contestants for the preliminary round, with only 8 advancing to the finals, but Goku, engrossed in eating, remains oblivious to the announcement. The drawings commence, and Krillin draws number 71 for the second half of block 2. Goku finds his place at the end of block 1, while Yamcha selects the first half of block 1. Curious about their draws, Goku inquires with Jackie who reveals he got number 178 in block 4. The PA system announces the imminent selection of the 8 finalists, prompting everyone to head to their designated blocks. The rules are then explained, one-on-one -on -one fights on the contestant platforms, resulting in a loss if you fall off, faint, or surrender. Participants move to their blocks, and the official at block 1 calls for the first two contestants, Yamcha and a random man. The match begins, and Yamcha swiftly knocks the man out, emerging victorious in a swift match. Observing Krillin in action, Yamcha and Goku witness him facing off against a significantly larger opponent who insults him as a baby octopus. Undeterred by the man's size though, Krillin skillfully maneuvers, using the opponent's large hand to sling him overhead into the wall nearby winning the match. Impressed, Goku commends Krillin for improving so drastically in the past three years, but suddenly, the three-eyed member from Master Shen's group approaches, talking trash. Krillin informs Goku that he's one of Master Shen's students, who's Master Roshi's rival, and the man boasts that the group are fortunate not to face him in the preliminaries, but promises to wipe the floor with them in the tournament, assuming they make it to the final eight. In response, Yamcha gives him a defiant gesture, telling him to get lost, and after hearing his number call, the man moves to start his match. Removing his coat, Krillin expresses skepticism about the fighter's prowess, but Goku admires his inner strength, noting he's probably an amazing martial artist. As his match begins, the three-eyed guy quickly dispatches a sumo wrestler, much to the surprise of the audience, who couldn't see a thing. The Turtle School students, however, took note of everything, as Yamcha states the wrestler was defeated with four karate chops, and Krillin states there were also two kicks. Goku once again admires Master Shen's student, 
Boone, who walks away thinking to himself that he'll unveil his true power soon enough. Time passes, and next up is Goku, who faces a confident looking man entering the ring. Spectators question if this is the renowned King Choppa, and having heard this name before, Yamcha explains to Krillin that Choppa is a skilled master in martial arts, having entered the Tenkaichi Budokai before and won without being touched by his opponents. As the duo grow nervous for Goku's fate, he and Choppa take their stances for battle. It seems Jackie is familiar with King Choppa as well and anticipates a challenging match for Goku, questioning himself on how Goku has really grown in the past three years. The match begins as Goku charges at Choppa, delivering a punch to his face, but it doesn't bring Choppa down. Yamcha notes the escalating intensity of the match, and Jackie predicts Choppa will employ the eight arm fist, a technique where rapid movements can create the illusion of eight arms. Sure enough, Choppa attacks, but Goku adeptly dodges each strike, executing a sweep kick that sends Choppa sprawling. Rising to his feet, Choppa attempts a swing, but Goku, having leaped into the air, evades it. Jackie notes that Goku has messed up, prompting Choppa to state the same, exclaiming that taking to the air will leave Goku vulnerable. However, Goku propels himself off the ceiling, diving down and using his breath to suddenly stop his descent before Choppa lands a blow. Goku then takes the opportunity to deliver a powerful kick that knocks Choppa off the platform, and the official declares Goku as the winner. Yamcha and Jackie are astounded at how effortlessly Goku defeated Choppa, and excited, Krillin tells his friend to save his strength for the real matches. Goku, however, states he didn't go all out in the least, and explains that if he'd used any of his full power on Choppa, he would have killed him. Goku instead feels he'll need to use it against Jackie and the others, who thinks this tournament will be harder to win this time around. Jackie's matchup comes up as he secures victory by knocking out his opponent. Yamcha acknowledges acknowledges Jackie's improvement since their last encounter, and marvels at the heightened excitement of this Budokai compared to the previous one. The preliminaries continue, with Master Roshi's three students and Jackie Chun advancing to the final eight. Excited, they rush outside to join the others, receiving congratulations from Bulma. Krillin inquires about Master Roshi's whereabouts, and Bulma humorously suggests he might be indulging in his perverted tendencies within the crowd. Suddenly, Master Roshi appears, stating he was actually watching the preliminaries, and complimenting his students on their improvements during the last three years. The PA system calls for the final eight, prompting the trio's departure and aiming to get a good seat to watch the battles, Launch clears the crowd by firing her pistol into the air. Backstage, Goku showcases his handstand skills while Krillin, Yamcha, and Jackie gather round. The three-eyed fighter arrives, taunting the Kame team, and a brief argument ensues between him and Yamcha, with Krillin expressing disbelief that the little guy standing next to him made it past the preliminaries. In response, the little guy called Chaozu playfully calls Krillin bald, prompting Krillin to retort that the little guy only has one strand of hair. The three-eyed guy, identified as Tien, pulls Chaozu aside and tells him to stop bickering as he sticks out his tongue at Krillin, who exclaims he'll remember that insult. The announcer arrives, instructing all participants to gather. He recognizes Goku, who excitedly greets him and requests the boy not damage the arena this time. A lottery will determine opponents in match order, with participants approaching when their names are called. Jackie Chun is called first and Tien expresses interest in seeing him in action. He tells Chaozu to have him fight someone suitable, and nearby, another contestant appearing as a wolf glares at Jackie with fury. Noticing this, Tien inquires about the wolf's beef with Jackie, but he declines to answer. This being enough for Tien though, he tells Chaozu to put him up against Jackie, and the fighter draws number four for the second match. Yamcha is called next, and Tien wants to face him, leading Chaozu to use telekinesis to make Yamcha draw number one for the first match. Match. A fighter known as Ponput is assigned number 7 for the fourth match, and Tien himself is placed at number 2, ensuring a first match showdown with Yamcha. Krillin is given number 6 for the third match, and Wolfman, or Man Wolf, is called up next, explaining that during a full moon he becomes a human, unlike the low class Wolfmen who become wolves during such a time. He steps up and draws number 3 thanks to Chaozu's intervention, growing excited at battling Jackie Chun in the second match. 
Shao Tzu steps up next and draws number 5, placing him in the third match against Krillin, and Goku is the last to be called, as he draws number 8 for the fourth match against Ponput. With the setup decided, the announcer explains the rules once more, as falling from the ring, being down for a 10 count, or giving up results in a loss. Before leaving, he inquires if Goku will want a pre-match meal this time around, to which the boy enthusiastically confirms. Tien ridicules the Turtle School for their focus on food at a time like this, and praises Shaotsu for his good work in setting up the matches. At the same time, Krillin excitedly notes how none of his friends get to go up against one another in the first matches, prompting confirmation from Jackie, who notes coincidences such as these happen from time to time. The gongs sound, and the announcer enters the stage, officially commencing the 22nd Tenkaichi Budokai with a 500,000 Zeni prize. The first match is announced, Yamcha vs Tien, generating excitement amongst the onlookers as Master Shen and Master Roshi's students prepare to face off. After some additional trash talk between the two, Yamcha charges at Tien with a kick, but Tien adeptly blocks it. Yamcha then narrowly evades Tien's jabs, displaying agility. Tien retaliates with a kick, prompting Yamcha to execute a series of backflips. Tien takes flight, kicking off the wall and launches a punch at Yamcha, who manages to leap out of harm's way. Undeterred, Tien pursues Yamcha into the air, but Yamcha skillfully blocks his attacks and sends him downward. Both fighters land gracefully, leaving the audience impressed as the combatants become intrigued by each other's abilities. Yamcha announces his wolf fang fist technique, piquing Tien's interest. They engage once again, and Tien successfully blocks all of Yamcha's attacks, delivering a powerful blow to the fighter's abdomen and sending him crashing to the floor. Despite the hit, Yamcha quickly recovers, preparing for his next move, his ace in the hole. Krillin expresses curiosity about Yamcha's strategy, and Goku identifies it as the Kamehameha. Jackie Chun observes with interest as Yamcha chants the technique, unleashing the powerful Kamehameha toward Tien. In response, Tien assumes a defensive stance, folding his hands in front of him with his index fingers extended, ready to confront the oncoming Kamehameha head on. All eyes are fixed on Tien as he stands his ground, deflecting the blast back toward Yamcha. This move surprises everyone, and barely escaping, Yamcha leaps to avoid the redirected blast, Tien following close behind. The attack collides with a building, nearly killing some of the audience and frustrates Yamcha, who's then alerted by Goku to watch out for impending danger. Tien then appears, and in midair, lands a devastating kick to Yamcha, sending him plummeting back to the ring. The impact is so forceful that Yamcha loses consciousness. Tien, however, still engaged, dives in, deliberately crushing Yamcha's leg with his knee much to Krillin's surprise. Tien rises from an unconscious Yamcha, and Goku rushes into the ring along with the announcer. Tien, in a smug manner, inquires about the count, and the announcer declares Tien the winner as Yamcha is unable to continue in his injured state. Concerned for Yamcha, the announcer instructs someone to arrange for his hospitalization, and Poir flies in crying to assist, transforming into a magic carpet. With the help of Goku and Krillin, Yamcha is placed on the carpet, and Poir flies off with him. Bulma and Launch decide to leave with the duo as well, and Goku, infuriated, calls out Tien for injuring someone who was already unconscious. Tien, however, states that Yamcha was lucky he got away with his life, and Goku vows to avenge his friend in the ring, though Tien dismisses his threat doubtful the kid can make his way into the finals. Nearby, Master Shen is pleased with the outcome of the match, and states that this is nothing compared to what Tien is truly capable of. The announcer then announces the beginning of the second match, Jackie Chun vs Manwolf. Manwolf strides to the ring, glaring at Jackie, and Shoutsu acknowledges Tien's victory. Tien, while confident, is no fool though, expressing disappointment in the performance of the Turtle Hermit style, but notes they're more capable than he thought, and tells Chaozu not to drop his guard. He predicts that Yamcha was likely the best among Master Roshi's three students and claims victory for the Crane School, as Goku wishes Jackie good luck in his match. The announcer updates the audience, stating that Jackie Chun emerged as the winner in the previous tournament. He also introduces Man Wolf, who undergoes a transformation from a wolf to a man upon seeing the full moon. Intrigued, Jackie wonders why Man Wolf harbors such intense animosity towards him. Man Wolf then reveals that Chun destroyed the 
moon in the last Tenkaichi Budokai, leaving him stuck in wolf form and unable to pursue romantic interests with human girls. Jackie suggests finding a wolf girlfriend, but Man Wolf dismisses the idea, expressing a distaste for hairy women. With the stage set, the announcer enthusiastically commences the second match. Man Wolf lunges at Jackie, but the seasoned fighter effortlessly evades the attacks, delivering a swift kick to the back of Man Wolf's head, sending him crashing to the ground. Man Wolf, infuriated, begins to rise to his feet as Jackie tells him to give up, stating he's far below his level. Nearby, Jackie draws the attention of the onlookers Tien and Shoutsu, the former appearing impressed with the previous tournament's victor. Goku and Krillin, intrigued, observe the two floating in midair, Krillin noting they won't be able to lose by ring out. Attempting another attack from behind, Man Wolf finds himself outmaneuvered by Jackie's acrobatics, who kicks him on the head and nonchalantly resumes his focus on a girl in the audience. Jackie continues to dodge Man Wolf's punches, eventually kicking him into a wall and asking the announcer to start the count. As the count reaches seven, Man Wolf retrieves a knife, prompting the announcer to declare the use of weapons is foul play. Man Wolf, however, exclaims his disdain for the rules and attempts to stab Jackie, who skillfully halts the attack, lifts his opponent with ease, and tosses him into the wall. Jackie playfully throws the knife next to Man Wolf, surprising him, and tells him he'll turn him human once again. Man Wolf is skeptical of Jackie's claims, but the fighter insists on doing so, noting first they'll need to end their match. Man Wolf, however, refuses to surrender, prompting Jackie to hilariously treat him like a dog, telling him to shake his hand. The fighter pulls out a few more stops to release Man Wolf's animalistic nature, throwing a bone off the arena which she chases, resulting in a victory for Jackie. However, still harboring resentment, Man Wolf returns to the ring. As he rushes toward Jackie once more, Jackie employs a paralysis technique to immobilize him. To transform Man Wolf back into a human without the moon, Jackie calls Krillin over to help. He puts the boy in position and fixates Man Wolf gaze on his shiny bald head. Krillin guesses that Jackie's attempting to use his head in place of the full moon, but says that if it were possible, Goku would have already transformed. Jackie, however, plans to use hypnosis on Man Wolf to make him believe it's the full moon, and puts him in a trance as Krillin stands still. Suddenly, Man Wolf transforms back into a human, joyfully thanking Jackie for helping him out. He then runs off to pursue romantic endeavors, but Jackie notes his looks may not get him far. With the second match concluded, match 3 is then announced, Chaozu versus the full moon head Krillin, much to Krillin's humiliation. The announcer introduces Krillin as a student of the Turtle Hermit School, and Chaozu as a pupil of his rival, Master Shen. Goku wishes Krillin good luck, and with the stage set, the announcer signals the start of the match. Krillin assumes a fighting stance, while Chaozu remains motionless, wearing an expressionless face. Confused by Chaozu's lack of movement, Krillin is taken by surprise as Chaozu suddenly slides forward, delivering a kick that propels Krillin into the air. Seizing the advantage, Chaozu ascends and swings at Krillin, who expertly backflips to the ground. Krillin then kicks off the ground, launching a counterattack on Chaozu. Chaozu dodges, allowing Krillin to fly over him, and Chaozu gracefully descends to the ground. Krillin descends, kicks off the ring, and charges at Chaozu, momentarily disappearing. Tien warns of an attack from the left, but Chaozu struggles to identify the direction. Swiftly reappearing, Krillin lands a punch on Chaozu, and capitalizing on the advantage, Krillin continues his assault, prompting Chaozu to retreat to the air. Krillin ponders on how to attack as he can't fly himself, and recognizing Chaozu's technique as the signature flying technique of the crane style, Jackie expresses acknowledgement. The battle intensifies as Chaozu unveils a surprise attack, holding up one finger, which ignites before unleashing a dodon paw at Krillin. Krillin evades the energy blasts, wondering what the attack is, and on the sidelines, Goku exclaims the attack originated from Mercenary Tao. This catches Tien's attention as he confronts Goku, questioning how he knows that name, and Goku states he killed Mercenary Tao, sparking a mixture of fury and realization in Tien. As the fighter walks away, Jackie Chun questions Goku on if he really killed Tao, and upon confirmation, Jackie marvels at Goku's power and reveals that Mercenary Tao is Master Shen's younger brother. Meanwhile, Krillin continues dodging a barrage of Dodo on Pa, frustrated that he's completely helpless at the moment. Tien approaches Master Shen in the crowd and says he needs to share crucial information with him, as Krillin, continuing to evade, considers using the Kamehameha as Yamcha did. He attempts a blast just to see if he can pull it off, and upon releasing a minor burst of energy, he confirms he can perform 
learn the technique after all. At the same time, Master Shen is informed of his younger brother's death at the hands of one of Master Roshi's students, but Tien believes he must have gotten lucky, as there's no way Tao could have been killed so easily. Shen states he found it odd that he hadn't seen his brother in three years, and furious, he tells Chaozu to stop playing around and kill Krillin. Backstage, Jackie notes the Crane School's intention to kill the Turtle School students, and in a strategic move, Chaozu prepares to unleash a powerful Dodon Pa on Krillin. However, Krillin surprises everyone by initiating a Kamehame chant, leaving Jackie to believe his minor experience wielding the technique won't be enough to surpass the Dodon Pa. Chaozu launches the Dodon Pa at Krillin, prompting smirks from Tien and Master Shen, while Jackie appears genuinely concerned. Krillin, in a decisive moment, shouts now and leaps into the air just as the Dodon Pa hits the ring, resulting in a massive explosion. Rising to Chaozu's level, Krillin finally unleashes his Kamehameha, landing a direct hit. Excited, Krillin celebrates as Chaozu is sent hurtling outside the ring, but manages to arrest his descent, utilizing his flying technique to avoid a loss. Jackie expresses admiration for Krillin's performance, noting that with proper training, his Kamehameha would have ended the match, and a tense standoff ensues between Krillin and Chaozu. Tien is infuriated that Krillin evaded the Dodon Pa and still managed to fire his own attack, and Krillin charges at Chaozu with a kick, but Chaozu skillfully ducks. Undeterred, Krillin executes a vertical kick, propelling Chaozu across the ring. As the fighter closes in though, Chaozu extends his hands, causing Krillin to freeze, clutching his stomach. Master Shen telepathically instructs Chaozu not to throw Krillin out, but to pummel him to death instead, and Krillin notes that Chaozu is using psychic powers. Chaozu forcefully kicks Krillin, sending him crashing into a wall. Wounded but resilient, Krillin rebukes Chaozu's techniques, realizing that the fighter needs to use his hands for his telekinesis. Seizing an opportunity, Krillin questions Chaozu on what 3 plus 4 is. This forces Chaozu to count using his fingers, and Krillin breaks free and lands a gut punch. Chaozu regains his composure before Krillin can strike again, eliciting relief from Tien and frustration from Master Shen. Chaozu retaliates by asking Krillin what 16 plus 27 is, but when Krillin swiftly calculates the answer as 43, Chaozu expresses shock. Krillin then bounces back with 9 minus 1, and struggling to count, Chaozu falls for Krillin's trap as the fighter lands a punch that sends him flying out of the ring. The announcer declares Krillin as the winner of the match as he announces the answer is 8, and as the onlookers cheer for his victory, Shen notes he should have trained Chaozu in mad. The announcer signals the start of the fourth match, marking the appearance of all eight competitors. Ponput is called first, known as a renowned contender, while Goku, the previous tournament's runner-up, draws attention. The announcer expects an exceptional match, and Ponput throws a punch at Goku, stopping just in front of his face. Impressed that the boy didn't run away, Ponput remains confident, but unfazed, Goku asserts that punch didn't look like much. Puzzled by Goku's reaction, Ponput attempts to demonstrate his prowess, executing a series of punches and kicks before shattering a section of the back wall with his elbow, emphasizing the challenge Goku faces. Undeterred, Goku acknowledges the display, and though Krillin notes the fighter is a show-off, Jackie says his destruction of the arena made it easier for them to watch the matches. Ponput asserts he'll end the match in no more than 30 seconds, and as the battle begins, Ponput charges at Goku, but Goku quickly counters with an elbow strike to Ponput's stomach, causing him to stagger and collapse unconscious. This display shocks the audience as the announcer declares Ponput's incapacitation, declaring Goku the winner of the match. As he goes on to state Goku's defeated his adversary with only one blow, Tien disputes the simplicity of Goku's victory, asserting that the fighter's maneuver involved a sequence of three elbow shots. Recognizing Goku's skill and validating the truth behind killing mercenary Tao, Tien acknowledges the heightened intrigue of the tournament. Backstage, Krillin congratulates Goku on defeating Ponput, a supposedly formidable opponent. Goku attributes his victory to Ponput being off his game, but Jackie highlights the boy's newfound strength, attributing their improved abilities to their enhanced perception and agility. Reflecting on Yamcha's defeat and his own challenging match against Chaozu, Krillin acknowledges the formidable formidable strength of Master Shen's group. However, Jackie states that their struggle couldn't be helped as their opponents are extraordinary super masters in martial arts. The announcer then proceeds to announce
announced the start of the semifinals fifth match, pitting Tien, the victor of the first match, against Jackie Chun, who won the second match. Jackie enters the ring, facing Tien, who recognizes Jackie's exceptional abilities. Meanwhile, Krillin ponders the extent of he and Goku's newfound strength. The announcer anticipates an intriguing match and signals for it to commence. Krillin is optimistic about Jackie's victory, hoping for revenge on behalf of Yamcha, but Goku remains uncertain, telling his friend that he wouldn't be surprised if Jackie or Tien won. Tien initiates with a punch toward Jackie, who adeptly blocks it. In response, Jackie counters with a kick, which Tien skillfully deflects. Tien executes a high kick, but Jackie evades by ducking and seizes Tien's leg, tossing him across the ring. Tien flips over and charges back at Jackie, arms forming an X. However, Jackie effortlessly jumps over him, and the two engage in mid-air exchanges of punches. Upon landing with their backs turned, Jackie swiftly maneuvers, creating numerous after images to encircle Tien. Despite Tien's identification of the technique, he manages to identify the real Jackie and kicks him into the wall asserting his immunity to such tricks with three eyes. Determined to escalate the fight, Jackie discards his jacket as Tien charges toward him, flaunting erratic hand movements. Jackie, however, discerns the movements and seizes Tien's wrists, delivering a knee to his gut, followed by a kick that propels Tien into the air. Although visibly angered upon landing, Tien regains momentum, delivering a knee to Jackie's chest and a punch to his face, causing Jackie to stagger. Undeterred, Jackie retaliates with a powerful punch to Tien's face, leaving both combatants in awe and the spectators captivated by the intense battle. Noting Tien's incredible power, Jackie questions why the fighter insists on being a student of Master Shen, prompting Tien to warn Jackie about speaking ill of his teacher and declare his intention to get serious. Perplexed, Jackie questions whether Tien wasn't serious until now, and Krillin dismisses it as a bluff. Tien then assumes a unique hand gesture with his thumbs closed in and the other eight fingers spread apart, introducing his new technique, the solar flare. A blinding flash emanates, affecting everyone, including Jackie. Seizing the opportunity, Tien swiftly knees Jackie in the back of the head as the fighter crashes to the ground, Tien asserting he'll probably never regain consciousness. The announcer begins the count, and Goku and Krillin gradually open their eyes. Surprisingly, Jackie rises at the count of five, leaving Tien astonished. Given his abnormal fighting ability, Master Shin questions Jackie's identity as Tien wonders the same. Jackie then questions why someone like Tien is connected to Master Shen, and suggests rather than walking an evil path, the fighter choose a better way. Angrily, Tien threatens to shut Jackie's mouth and charges toward him. Although Jackie blocks a flurry of punches, Tien lands a kick to his face. Jackie taunts Tien as it seems his mindset is wavering, prompting Tien's disbelief at Jackie's continued banter. Meanwhile, Goku wonders how the knee strike to Jackie's head was called during the blinding light, and and Krillin points out that the announcer has sunglasses, which prevent light from blinding him. Jackie persists in criticizing Tien for his loyalty to Master Shen, who suddenly realizes Jackie's true identity as Master Roshi and telepathically conveys it to Tien. Knowing now that the secret is out, Jackie tells Tien his advice to him was genuine despite his relationship with Master Shen. But having heard enough, Tien decides to demonstrate an interesting technique. He initiates the chant of the Kamehameha, surprising Jackie. Jackie, Krillin, and Goku as he unleashes the massive attack. Jackie, aiming to prevent the death of those in the audience, catches the blast with his hands and redirects it into the air, much to the crowd's relief. Goku and Krillin marvel at Tien's capabilities, while Tien claims the Kamehameha is a standard technique he can master after witnessing it once. He urges Jackie to unveil more of his power, but Jackie imparts some final thoughts about choosing a brighter path, casually walks to the edge of the ring, and hops out. The the audience is astonished as Jackie returns to grab his jacket and head backstage. Tien questions his abrupt departure, but Jackie ignores him, leaving Master Shen to speculate that he might have been intimidated by his student's power. Tien, however, notes that Jackie never unveiled his true strength, and backstage, Jackie reflects on the new era unfolding, deciding to let the younger generation take the lead. The sixth match is about to commence, featuring Master Roshi's two 
two disciples, Son Goku and Krillin, who battle for the opportunity to face Tien in the finals. Krillin suddenly realizes the impending confrontation between them, causing a moment of panic. However, Goku is excited about the prospect of their first ever battle. Both promise to give their best and make their way to the ring. Meanwhile backstage, Master Roshi is back to his suit and hat he wore to the arena, and Tien appears, questioning what's going on. Tien inquires about the disguise, and Master Roshi explains it's for the sake of his students. He notes that should one of them win the tournament, they'd be thrilled by the prospect of being the strongest in the world, thus losing all ambition to continue to train. To prevent this, he created Jackie Chun to push them to continue working hard, and Tien asserts he understands. Tien suggests that Master Roshi must have conceded, realizing none of his pupils could defeat him, but Roshi disputes this claim, surprising Tien. The announcer declares the start of match 6, and at the same time, Roshi shares with Tien that none of his students are foolish enough to believe they can win every fight. As Master Roshi departs, he remarks that Tien is on a similar journey and will eventually find the right path. Tien decides to reveal a significant ambition as he aspires to take the place of mercenary Tao as the world's greatest assassin. However, Roshi dismisses the statement and wishes Tien a good match, noting that he likely would have lost if the two had finished their battle. Tien then reflects on the old man's apparent lack of pride, but sits in silence. In the ring, Krillin initiates a kick, but Goku skillfully blocks it. Goku effortlessly intercepts Krillin's punch, retaliating with a kick. Krillin, displaying agility, evades Goku's kick midair and counters with a strike. Goku rushes in, pushing Krillin back with a swipe, and disappearing momentarily, he delivers a surprise kick to Krillin, who barely manages to evade. The two exchange blows as Goku puts Krillin on the defensive, Krillin retaliating with an attack that Goku swiftly manages to dodge. The two break apart and engage in a brief conversation before Krillin launches a swift elbow to Goku's face, followed by a powerful kick across the ring. Goku, unfazed, jumps into the air, prompting Krillin to pursue. As Krillin ascends, he cleverly angles his bald head to reflect sunlight into Goku's eyes. Seizing the opportunity, Opportunity. Krillin kicks Goku downward, but Goku skillfully lands on his feet, avoiding a crash that could have left him unconscious. Descending, Krillin prepares to land, prompting Goku to leap up for a decisive attack. Goku executes a jump kick toward Krillin, who, in a surprising move, inhales air and puffs up like a blowfish, floating just above Goku's kick. Krillin skillfully deflates and lands safely, while Goku rebounds off the backstage wall and lands as well. Impressed, Goku commends Krillin expressing that he's never had this much fun in a fight. Both fighters share their excitement as Krillin urges Goku once more to go all out, as Master Roshi, observing from the back of the audience, stands on his staff for a better view. In a sudden rush, Goku charges at Krillin, chanting the Kamehameha along the way. Just before reaching Krillin, Goku jumps into the air and unleashes the blast, directing the Kamehameha upward instead of at his opponent. The force propels Goku toward Krillin, enabling him to deliver a punch to the face that sends Krillin flying. Pursuing him, Goku performs front flips to catch Krillin and lands a knee to his gut. The spectators are shocked by Goku's intensity and the announcer begins the count. However, Krillin manages to rise at the count of three, much to Goku's pleasure. Appearing nervous, Krillin acknowledges Goku's attacks, growing serious as he readies his counterattack. Krillin charges at Goku, but Goku effortlessly taps him on the back, sending him to the ground. Undeterred, Krillin returns to his feet, running across the ring as he contemplates his next move. At the same time, Master Roshi notes that Krillin's abilities already approach the levels of a superhuman, and Krillin decides to unleash a Kamehameha, prompting Goku to warn him that it won't work. Krillin unleashes the blast anyway though, and Goku confidently extends his hand, the blast exploding harmlessly against it. Goku taunts Krillin, asserting he was right after all, but Krillin vanishes, reappearing behind Goku and grabs his tail, pinpointing Goku's weak spot. Tien contemplates this newfound information, while Master Roshi admires Krillin's strategic thinking. Amused by the sudden turn of events, Krillin laughs heartily as Goku's strength gradually wanes. The announcer exclaims that Son Goku is down, and Tien finds the situation unexpected, but anticipates an easy victory when facing Krillin. However, as the countdown reaches 9, Goku swiftly rises, leaping over Krillin's head while still clutching his tail. In a surprise move, Goku slams Krillin down much to everyone's shock. Krillin rises, expressing confusion as Goku's tail has always been his greatest weakness, but Goku reveals that he 
trained his tail in the past three years, following the advice from Master Roshi to do so. Nearby, Roshi reflects on this development, acknowledging that Goku has eliminated his weak point. Krillin resorts to a classic distraction, the look over there gag, and takes advantage of Goku's turned head to elbow him in the face. Goku notes the unfairness of the tactic, and Roshi humorously notes that Goku does have a weakness, and that he's too honest and straightforward. In an instant, Goku disappears from sight, leaving Krillin bewildered and searching frantically. Unseen by everyone except Tien, who realizes Goku is moving at an incredible speed while gradually drawing closer to his opponent, Goku suddenly reappears in front of Krillin, sticking his tongue out. Goku swiftly strikes Krillin, sending him flying out of the ring, much to the confusion of the audience. The unexpected outcome surprises the spectators, who note that this was a boring outcome to such an incredible match. Tien, though, having seen everything, thinks to himself that only an amateur could have missed what happened, as Goku delivered four chops to Krillin, but made them just weak enough to where the fighter would fall out of bounds. At the same time, both Master Shen and Master Roshi contemplate Goku's abilities. Krillin, climbing back into the ring through Goku's assistance, is confused on what took place, but Goku states he'll teach him how to do it later. The announcers suggest a recess before the next match, but Goku declines, prompting the start of the tournament finals. With anticipation building, the announcer declares the beginning of the finals to determine the greatest martial artist in the world, featuring a prize of 500,000 zenny for either Tien or Son Goku. Krillin urges Goku not to lose, and Tien looks forward to what promises to be an exciting match. As Tien and Goku make their way to the ring, Master Roshi, seeking a better view, dashes through the audience, reaching behind the back wall near the ring, where Krillin is observing. Krillin reminds him that only contestants are allowed in the arena, but Master Roshi remains nonchalant. In the audience, Master Shen and Chaozu observe, with Shen contemplating Tien's victory for the sake of Mercenary Tao. A tense atmosphere prevails as Tien and Goku lock eyes, prompting the announcer to initiate the match. Goku lunges at Tien with a strike, but Tien adeptly blocks the attack. Swiftly, Tien launches an attack, but Goku evades it, utilizing his tail to grasp Tien's leg. Spiraling around Tien's leg, Goku delivers an uppercut that propels Tien across the ring. Tien executes a somersault before landing, propelling himself off the ring and into the air. Pursuing him, Goku attempts a jump kick, only to be met with Tien's dodon pa, resulting in a direct hit that sends Goku crashing through the ring. Tien descends with a smirk as Goku unexpectedly ascends from beneath the ring. Launching off the ring upon landing, Goku charges at Tien. Employing the super speed trick he used against Krillin, Goku seemingly vanishes, but Tien keenly follows the sounds of Goku's movements, delivering a powerful strike that propels Goku across the ring. Unfazed, Tien derides the childish trick and charges after Goku. Brutally, he elbows Goku into the back wall, proceeding to unleash a barrage of strikes against him. Master Roshi observes, likening the attack to a machine gun, while Tien eventually clubs Goku down off the wall. Holding the weakened Goku with one hand, Tien confidently queries whether he prefers to be sent to heaven or hell. He propels Goku into the air, executing an abrupt turn and declares his volleyball fist technique, sporting an unexpectedly adorable expression. Tien claps his hands together and charges toward Goku just as he descends back to the ring. One, Tien nudges Goku back into the air using the back of his wrist. Two, Tien raises his hands above his head, positioning Goku like a volleyball in midair. Subsequently, Tien leaps after Goku and yells attack as he forcefully spikes Goku back down toward the ring, causing Goku to impact heavily, appearing lifeless. To everyone's astonishment though, Goku effortlessly rebounds, leaving Tien amazed at his resilience. Goku asserts that he's ready to go all out, as he knows now that Tien won't die if he pushes his power to the limit. Tien assumes Goku is bluffing, believing he's been using his full power the entire time, and Goku says he has been, but only his full power for matches. He goes on to say that because Tien's trying to kill him, he can finally unleash the power he uses for combat, prompting Tien's skepticism. Goku initiates his combat strength, and in a swift motion, he charges at Tien, delivering a punch to the face, a blow to the gut, and then kicks Tien across the ring. Goku continues the assault, soaring beneath Tien, delivering a kick to his back from below, propelling Tien high into the air. Opting for a Kamehameha, Goku pauses just before releasing it and changes his mind. Tien lands, taking a moment to collect himself and expresses his appreciation for the 
intense fight, exclaiming he never thought he'd ever fight someone as strong as Goku. He exclaims he'll win the fight no matter what though, prompting dismissal from Goku. On the sidelines, Krillin believes Goku is foolish for not completing the Kamehameha, but Master Roshi explains to him that Goku is thinking ahead, as it would have been wasteful to use the attack at this point in the battle. At the same time, the battle between Goku and Tien intensifies. The two engage in a rapid exchange of strikes, too swift for the spectators to follow. Dodging a kick from Tien, Goku performs a backflip and creates numerous after images, leaving Tien excited by the sudden use of the technique. Descending from above, one Goku approaches Tien, who attempts to kick him, while another Goku sneaks up from behind. The deceptive Goku lands a punch through Tien, only for the genuine Tien to materialize behind the illusory Goku, delivering a chop. Tien, however, punches through another false Goku, and the authentic Goku concludes the sequence with a powerful kick to the face. The shocking display leaves Master Roshi, Krillin, Master Shen, and Chaozu in disbelief as Tien falls to the ground. Fueled by anger, Tien rises and prepares to retaliate, initiating a blinding solar flare. Capitalizing on Goku's momentary blindness, Tien charges in and prepares to strike, but Goku catches his fist with his left hand and delivers a powerful punch to Tien's stomach with his right. Attempting to gather himself, Tien questions how this happened, only to find Goku wearing Master Roshi's sunglasses. Tien remains down, providing Goku with an opportunity to return the sunglasses to Master Roshi as the announcer begins the count. However, Tien unexpectedly rises at the count of seven, kneeing Goku in the face against the wall. Goku retreats behind Tien, nursing his throbbing face. Tien claims his previous fall was due to being unprepared, while Master Roshi mourns the damage to his sunglasses. At the same time, Krillin notes that Roshi looks oddly familiar without his glasses, and aiming to keep his identity as Jackie Chun a secret, Roshi urges his student to focus on the match. Determined to secure a genuine victory, Goku and Tien charge at each other. As Goku leaps to attack from above, an unexpected freeze occurs, allowing Tien to land a forceful strike, sending Goku back to the ring. Master Roshi expresses surprise, while Goku, recovering slowly, denounces the tactic as dirty, leaving Tien to ponder his words as Master Shen smiles deviously. Perplexed, Tien questions what Goku is talking about, and silently, Master Roshi curses Master Shen while Tien charges at Goku. Goku challenges Tien to try his move again and retaliates by rushing at him, but Master Shen instructs Chaozu to intervene. Upon Chaozu's command, Goku freezes, allowing Tien to deliver a forceful kick to his face, sending Goku bouncing across the ring. Goku, in a creative move, propels himself back into the ring with a Kamehameha to avoid a loss and launches at Tien, and simultaneously, Tien charges in as well. Chaozu, however, freezes Goku again on Master Shen's command, giving Tien another opportunity to attack. The announcer declares a shift in the tide as Goku appears down and begins the count. Struggling to rise, Goku seems immobilized by Chaozu's telekinesis. Tien notices something unusual and wonders what's going on, until telepathically, Master Shen urges Tien to finish Goku off. Tien, however, resists, wanting to win the match with his true strength. Master Shen repeats his command to his student angrily, but Tien refuses to comply as the count reaches eight. In a sudden burst of determination, Tien yells aloud for Chaozu to cease his meddling, much to the surprise of his friend, as Goku rises before the count's end. Goku rushes in to attack Tien, but Master Roshi intervenes, yelling at Goku to halt. Master Shen berates Tien for his disobedience, while Tien explains his desire to win with his own power. Shen insists on Tien resuming his assault, but Tien, conflicted, decides not to kill Goku and expresses his disinterest in being an assassin. Enraged, Master Shen assumes that Roshi had something to do with this change of heart and declares he'll kill both he and Tien for opposing him as he urges Chaozu to paralyze them both. Chaozu though, torn between the commands of his friend and master, says he'd like to see Tien fight in his full strength as well, prompting Shen to grab his student by the shirt and prepare to kill him. Tien panics at the grim situation, but suddenly, Master Roshi takes drastic action, firing a Kamehameha at Master Shen, 
propelling him far into the distance. Roshi asserts his rival won't be killed by an attack like that and urges Tien and Goku to finish their battle, prompting an apology from Goku as he notes Tien's not as bad as he thought. Grappling with the weight of betraying his teacher though, Tien resolves to win the match. With determination, he warns Goku to prepare for his next formidable attack while Chaozu watches in anticipation from the audience, expressing concern about Tien's intentions. As Goku readies himself, Tien stretches his arms outward, beginning to power up. Spectators wonder about Tien's actions, and Chaozu excitedly identifies the technique as the four supernatural fists, and not a technique known as the tri-beam. To everyone's shock, two humps emerge on Tien's back, and two additional arms protrude. The bizarre sight causes a collective reaction of astonishment, and Tien boasts to Goku about doubling his punching power with the additional arms. Tien launches an attack, and although Goku manages to block the strikes from Tien's front arms, the fighter surprises him by delivering powerful blows with his back arms. Goku retreats, nursing his back, as Tien resumes his assault. Seizing one of Goku's limbs with each of his four hands, Tien lifts Goku overhead and slams him down with a forceful headbutt to the abdomen. Goku counters by striking Tien in the face with his tail, and swiftly evades. Demonstrating his agility, Goku playfully claims to counter Tien's four arms with eight and rapidly demonstrates them, much to the fighter's shock. However, on the sidelines, Master Roshi sees through this technique, noting Goku's arms are only appearing as eight given he's moving them incredibly fast. Goku charges in and assaults Tien with a flurry of punches, leaving Tien struggling to defend. After delivering a punch and kick combo, Goku sends Tien into the air, landing with frustration Tien wonders why he's having so much trouble defeating Goku, but concludes that fighting him head on leaves him vulnerable to attacks. Acknowledging Goku's incredible power, Tien retracts his additional limbs. He then issues a stern warning to Goku, emphasizing the lethality of his next technique. He insists that he doesn't want to kill Goku though, and urges him to avoid it. Goku expresses confusion as Master Roshi shows concern, Chaozu then exclaiming that Tien plans to use the deadly technique known as the Tri. Tri-beam. Confirming his suspicions, Roshi informs Krillin about the destructive power of the Tri-beam, surpassing even the Kamehameha. He goes on to say that the technique is so extreme that it uses up a large amount of energy and has even been rumored to kill its user or shorten their lifespan. Roshi curses Master Shen for teaching Tien such a dangerous technique, and Shaozu pleads for his friend to refrain from doing such a thing. However, Tien asserts that he won't die and ascends into the air, instructing Goku once more to dodge. As Tien positions himself above, Goku refuses to run away, prompting urgency from Master Roshi as his student plans to confront whatever's coming. Frillin questions what Tien's plan is, and Roshi explains that he's likely aiming for Goku to lose by ring out. Tien puts his hands together with raised index fingers, initiating his power-up process. Pulling his hands apart, they begin to charge with energy. Inquisitive, Krillin questions about the glowing hands, prompting Master Roshi to explain that Tien is concentrating all the ki within his body. Forming his hands into a triangular shape, Tien announces that the target is the ring. Convinced that he'll deplete all his ki and drain most of his strength, Tien unleashes the tri-beam with a resounding cry. A colossal flash and explosion follow, leaving Tien panting as he observes the damage to the ring. Krillin and Master Roshi, along with the announcer, are shocked at the disappearance of the ring, replaced by a massive hole in the ground. Goku, seemingly obliterated along with the ring, is cause for concern. While Master Roshi is impressed with the power of the Tri-Beam, Krillin anxiously worries about Goku's fate. Roshi remains optimistic that Goku isn't dead, and Tien detects something and ascends into the air. Discovering Goku miraculously unharmed, Tien applauds Goku's ability to jump this high in an instant. Goku commends Tien's technique, emphasizing that he truly would have died had he not evaded. The announcer, using binoculars, continues to narrate the unfolding match as Tien, now descending with Goku, declares victory for himself. Goku, grappling with the gravity, faces the challenge of not having a ring or solid ground beneath. The absence of a ring implies that merely touching the ground constitutes a ring out, and unlike Tien, Goku is unable to fly. Determined, Goku, despite Tien's ability to fly, asserts that he'll attempt one last attack. 
Tien, somewhat decisive, underestimates Goku's strength. Goku, however, initiates a Kamehameha, much to the shock of Master Roshi below, who notes the technique won't work. But with a surprising twist, Goku redirects the blast away from Tien, propelling himself toward the fighter, who watches with a mix of surprise and concern. Goku continues his trajectory toward Tien, delivering a powerful headbutt to the fighter's gut, causing him to descend at an angle toward the city, away from the arena. Goku, falling behind due to the depletion of his strength from the Kamehameha, struggles to control his body. To verify the winner, the announcer quickly deploys a capsule, unveiling a shark-themed vehicle and speeds away to continue commentating. As Goku and Tien approach the ground, Goku manages a small Kamehameha to slightly increase his altitude. The announcer relays this development on the radio, reaching Yamcha, Puar, Bulma, and Lunch at the hospital, bringing excitement. However, a truck obstructs Goku's path, leading to a collision and subsequent crash into the street, with Tien crashing shortly afterward. When the dust settles, the announcer declares Tien the winner of the 22nd Tenkaichi Budokai, stunning everyone except Chaozu, who's delighted. After some time, the announcer bids farewell to the fans, anticipating a reunion in three years. The Dragon Team gathers, including Tien and Chaozu. Goku, lacking other clothes, changes into Krillin's less damaged gi. Tien offers Goku half of the prize money, but Goku declines, admitting he wouldn't know what to do with it anyway. Tien, feeling fortunate, downplays his victory, noting that in terms of actual ability, he lost. Master Roshi, however, notes that luck is a part of one's abilities too, and asserts that Goku's learned a lot from fighting someone like him. He then says they should all go eat a celebratory meal, with Krillin warning Tien about treating, as Goku has an immense appetite. Concerned about his missing Dragon Ball and Power Pole though, Goku prompts Krillin to volunteer and retrieve them from the backstage house. Yamcha, on crutches due to his leg injury, and Tien begin to reconcile. Master Roshi extends sends an invitation for Tien and Chaozu to join him at his place, supported by Launch's enthusiastic agreement as she's fallen for Tien's brutal side. However, Tien, still Master Shen's student, declines, opting to live elsewhere with Chaozu. Suddenly, a loud scream emanates from the backstage house, recognized as Krillin's voice. Everyone rushes in to find Krillin toppled over, and the announcer weakly explaining that a monster stole a peculiar ball in the Budokai name registration list. Master Roshi wonders what this could mean, but Goku cuts in, yelling aloud that Krillin's been murdered. The 22nd Tenkaichi Budokai is an amazing arc in the story of Dragon Ball, leading into the story of Demon King Piccolo as we got to witness Goku's growth as a fighter. Tien's change in character throughout the Budokai was also amazing, given his potential as a martial artist and consideration to all the help he provides to Goku and the others as the story progresses. But what did you think of this arc? Did you enjoy it? Let me know down in the comments below. We're only one video away from wrapping up the entire story of OG Dragon Ball, so you guys will get another compilation video soon. That being said, make sure to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys next time.